Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, my name is Susie and I'm the owner and creator here at Susie on the Farm. As many of you may know, I am an iron orchid design stockist and today is a huge day in the world of crafting with the IOD Spring Collection release. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys all the 15 new products and a few things that I did with some of them. I got these a few days ago and I have been non-stop playing with them and I can't wait to get them to you all so you guys can start creating too. Now let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So here is my stash of IOD that I'm loading up on the website. All this is getting ready to be headed you guys' way. We're going to start with transfers. There are um, three transfers in this release. And the first one is called Lover of Flowers. And it is at eight pages, the smaller eight by 12. And it's got all these vintage flowers and poem poems and stuff. And I love the idea that they did here, putting them in frames. And I love this transfer. For some reason, it reminds me of my mama's house. And so it's very dear to me. And I love flowers and all live plants. So I really love this transfer. Now, I wanted to show you guys each page and for the project I am going to use this transfer for just a little project just an easy thing and I tried to prep some of my products basically get all my blanks ready to go so this video would not be too long because you guys have seen me paint many a thing but look at all these beautiful florals in this packet so I like I said, I pre-painted these um, thrifted coasters, and I'm going to put some of the small flowers on each one of them. I love how it has the name of the flower, too. So I just put a transfer on each of these coasters, and then I also had some of the, um, I think they came from Dollar Tree, just some of the small, like, faux cutting boards that I pre-painted and I'm going to put some of the larger flowers on those. If you've never used a transfer before, they're super easy. You just peel the plastic backing off of them and then each of the transfer sets come with this rubbing tool and you just rub it until your transfer is transferred onto your project and if you lift the plastic backing as you go, it makes it easier. You can layer transfers. You can go over the edges. As you see, I'll have some here that are still hanging over the edges, and I just push them down on the sides, and I like how these turned out. I took a little bit of twine and wrapped it around it, and I love this color in the background with all these florals, and I love this transfer pack so much, you guys. Off camera, I do seal these with uh, Fusion clear coat in the mat, and I did several coats on these coasters because we're going to be using them in our living room. Okay, for the second transfer pack, I am terrible at French. I think it is called Joey de Rosas. So that's what I'm going to call it. All my French is going to be way Southern sounding, but look how gorgeous this transfer is on furniture on any color. And every color makes it look different. I have a dresser ready to go, and I'm going to put this transfer on it. Also, we have the Collage de Fleur. And this one is extra special because it's just random floral that you can put together. You got stems, you got leaves. I love these transfers that you can make look however you want and you can make it look as different or as alike as you want. See how this one here is and they don't even look the same. Love all the transfers, all the florals, and now we're moving on to stamps. There's four stamps, I believe. The first one is called Veranda. I have not had a chance to use this one yet, but it's got this beautiful lattice and these frame images. It's two pages, 
and I can't wait to do some projects with it. Also, you have the mercantile stamp set. It's also two pages, very farmhouse. It has chickens and cows and these grain sack stripes. I'm so happy to have a grain sack stripe stamp because it can be kind of tedious to tape and paint grain sack stripes. So we're definitely going to use that one in today's project. So for today's project, I have some tea towels and some canvas bags that I had on hand. I had ordered these a long time ago off Amazon. I knew that I wanted to use the grain sack stripe and I'm just gonna kind of lay these stamps out how I want to use them. I think I have already seasoned these. If you're using a stamp set for the first time, you wanna be sure to um, take a 220 grit sandpaper and rough it up just a little bit to give the ink something to stick to. So I'm gonna put this quality grains with the uh, rooster and those like wheat laurels, I don't know what they're called, like a wheat wreath kind of thing. I'm gonna use black ink and I'm just gonna ink this up using a thin mount. Thin mounts are great for lining up your stuff. This one is pretty easy to line up by eye and I'm much more of an eyeing gal. I don't really measure things out. I just do it until they look good to me. So I did that in the center of the bag. And then I'm gonna use some red ink to do the grain sack stripe on the side. As you can see, the grain sack stripe is not quite long enough for my bag, but these stamps are very easy to line up. So I'm just gonna ink it up again and stamp again on the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and use the other page and do another canvas bag. And I'm just gonna use up as many of these stamps as I can. I think on this one, I even decide to put the year down underneath. And I love how these turned out. These, um, I don't know if I'll sell these. I think I may just, um, these will be like a free gift or something like that. I have sold many of these canvas bags before, but I like to display them in the booth also for examples of how to use the stamps. And when these are finished and the ink is completely dried, I'll either throw them in the dryer to do a heat set on them or um, use the iron to heat set the ink in. This is not permanent to last forever, but it will last a long time. The next stamp set is called Pastiche, and I'm equally excited about this one. All the stamps are just amazing. This one has all these cloches and bird nests and books and bird cages, and there's just so many things you can do with it. And also, this time, 
IOD has tinted the mask. I don't know if you've ever lost any of your masks, but they're super hard to find. And I love the idea of them being tinted so you, you can tell which one it goes to better. So I am going to do just a couple of tea towels just so I can get my hands on these stamps and use them a little bit. I'm so excited about this stamp set. It is so gorgeous. So I'm going to use the big bird cage and I'm going to use some of the stone gray ink. When you put this ink on the back of your stamp, you will swear that you are not getting anything on it, but I promise you are. Every time I test it to make sure it's wet and every time I get gray ink on my finger, but it's just a faint color, but it is so pretty. When you are stamping onto fabric, you really have to press down hard, harder than you would on another like hard surface. So just keep that in mind when you're stamping on fabric. So also it has all these little birds that you can put in these cages. This one's on a little swing and it's just absolutely precious. You could um, use the mask doing this, but honestly, this bird is supposed to be in this cage. So I don't mind that the cage shows through. I'm going to use the same um, bird cage for this other towel, but I am going to use the black ink. I just wanted it to show up just a little bit more. And I'm going to use the two birds like on a branch in this one, and it fits perfectly in this little bird cage as well. I think this might be my favorite stamp set. I'm going to use some of these elements in this one in another project with the next stamp set as well. So I have to use one of the cloches as well. And I have just this little round sign that I got at Dollar Tree a long time ago. I painted it up to make a blank out of it. The details on these stamp sets are just absolutely amazing. So I'm just gonna take um, a little book stack and put inside this cloche. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of the antique gold rub and buff just around the frame of it, just to give it just a little bit more detail. There's so much you can do with these stamps. And if I'd have had more time, I really could have done much more extravagant things for you guys. But I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the easy things that you can do with this stamp set. Okay, so there's a lot of buzz and a lot of excitement about this stamp set. This is a mini stamp set apothecary labels it comes in its own little package and there's four sheets of all these apothecary labels and finally some small fonts and i know i have and i'm sure that y'all have had a project that you needed a smaller font for and the letterpress or the um Typesetting stamp was just too big. This stamp set's gonna be perfect. It's got smaller letters and numbers and all these labels. And again, the IOD sisters have decided to tint these. I don't know if you've ever lost an eye before, but it's about impossible to find it, especially on a cement floor. So this will help with that. So I've got some more of these little cutting board, faux cutting boards that I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna use a few of these stamps on it. I'm gonna put a label, some floral, maybe some wording and just some different things. And then I'm gonna come back in the center and use some of the smaller elements from that pastiche stamp that I just showed you guys. And these turned out so cute and there are endless ideas that you can do with this stamp set. Um, I can't wait for you guys to get this one. Sorry, 
I'm not talking much. I planned on doing a full voiceover this morning, but I get up and I get ready and it's about 6.30 and there's a huge storm going through. So it's super loud here, but I'm just going to go ahead and do my best to get through it because I got to get this video uploaded and started for you guys in just a couple hours. So um, back to this stamp set, it's got Roman numerals in it also. I didn't even begin to touch the surface of everything that you can do with this stamp set. So y'all be sure to tune in because I can guarantee you that I'm going to be using all these products in lots of thrift flips coming up in the near future. Whenever I'm doing stuff like this, just to highlight the edges, I like to take my ink pad and just go around just to shadow those edges just a little bit. And then I'm going to come back with some of those other elements from the pastiche stamp. Y'all, there is a nest in there that I am in awe of. There's just so many things, birds and butterflies and eggs and so much stuff. And I just used a few of them in the center of these. are so much fun to play with. I love how these turned out. Not sure um, how much I'll sell them for, but they will go perfect in some cute little spring vignettes. This spring collection release has three paint inlays in it. I didn't get a chance to use any of them yet, but I definitely have plans. We have two that are like, this is the Petite Fleur Red, and it's got all these beautiful rose elements and perfect for updating your furniture. Again, goes great with any color, just really gives it that Victorian feminine look on any color. And then we also have the P Petite Fleur Pink, these are, um, I believe, a four sheet, so they're not as expensive as the full eight sheet um, paint inlays, and they're perfect for even doing smalls. I've seen lots of creators do some smalls with these elements, and it's absolutely beautiful. I think my favorite is this Lattice Rose paint inlay. It's got all these vintage um, wallpaper papers and they go well together or separate. They're great on smalls, in backgrounds, or on furniture. I've got an idea in mind for this one. Can't wait to use it. And finally, we're on to molds and there are five molds in this release. The first one is going to be this conservatory labels. Puts you in mind of that apothecary label that we just used and some of the letters will also fit in these molds. I have just a little quick update I'm going to do with this one. Um, anytime you're using a mold, you want to dust it, your mold with some cornstarch. I had these little um, 
apothecary jars that had a um, galvanized lid and then I have this salt and pepper shaker um, holder that I thought these labels would fit absolutely perfect on making them more like a set for um, you know sugar or whatever that you want to keep on your table with your salt and pepper so um, the IOD molds are super easy to use if you haven't got you some molds yet I promise they're gonna be your favorite it is so easy to update things with these molds using resin or clay i'm using the iod clay here and i'm just going to make up a few of these labels glue them on to my products i didn't do anything else to them at this time but you could also take some of those apothecary label stamps and do an indention in them but i didn't get a chance to do that in this video also didn't get a chance to use that round looking one but doesn't that remind you of like the labels um, mold that I'm always using from the Olive Crest. I can't wait to use that on so many projects. forget to leave a comment below which was your favorite of each of the products i want to know your favorite paint and lay your favorite stamp your favorite transfer and so on we have another mold this is called veritas and i looked up the term and that actually means young green so it's got all these florals and leaves and stems and we also have this faux boys which i believe means faux wood I didn't get a chance to use this, but my friend Susan over at Vintage Restore and More made this gorgeous piece of art with this, and it's going to be so amazing. This is called Specimens. Not sure about this one myself. I'm not really a bug person, but did y'all know you can also bake in the IOD molds? How cute would that be for a boy's birthday party to do some cookies in that? And we also have this gorgeous invitation only. And I'm going to do a project with it. And I've saved my very favorite for last. This has all the bust of the cat, the stag, the wolf, and the dog. These are kind of like the stamps in the antiquity stamp. I'm going to use some 10-minute resin on this. Super easy to use this stuff. You just do half part A, half part B, mix it really well and pour it in. And 10 minutes later, you have your mold set up and ready to come out. Um, the IOD molds have the exact measurement of resin that you will need. I knew I was gonna need this whole thing plus more, so I just poured it all up. You wanna pour really slow. Try not to over pour like I just did there. But if you do over pour, it's no big deal. I'll show you how to clean that up here in just a minute. It's super simple. So I'm gonna get all these made up and then about 10 minutes later, we're gonna come back and take them out of this mold. Okay, so now our molds are ready and it's quite satisfying removing these resin after they have cured. And y'all, look at the detail in these molds. I am gonna give the stag just another minute there because when it's not a real thick in the resin, like up in those antlers, um, it takes it just a little bit longer to cure. So here's the one that I over poured. Sometimes you can just pull right off depending on how thick your resin was there at the crease. Sometimes you will have to cut it off, but that is really super easy. go ahead and give each of these two coats of this bronze metallic this is a fusion metallic 
and it's one of my favorites. I love doing this metallic with dark wax over it. I am going to do that with all four of these molds, and I took those frames that I had got at an estate sale outside, and I sprayed them with a matte black spray paint, and we're going to put each of these molds in those frames. Look at this. I am obsessed with the detail on these molds. Um, I am going to take some, um, I'm going to dry brush some of that bronze just hitting the high spots on these frames just to give the outsides a little bit of detail so you can really, really bring all that detail out. The stag was a little too tall for the frame that has three in it, so he's getting his very own little frame. I'll sell these separate or together. Either way, they are so amazing. I can imagine this in a dark adamia type library or something. Very masculine, but also so cool. I'm just gonna hot glue these on. If someone ever decides to remove them and do something else with them, they'll be easy to remove just by heating up the hot glue. The fox, or is that a wolf? The wolf was a little bit too tall, so I kind of had to also glue his hat to the top, and he kind of leans out just a little bit. But y'all, I am obsessed with these molds. What do you guys think about this project? I hope that y'all have enjoyed this video and the projects that I have started with the new IOD release. Like I said, I'm going to be using these a lot in upcoming videos if you need any ideas. Also, don't forget over on Facebook to join my inspiration group. So excited to finally get this going, and I want to see what you guys are creating. That is the whole point. You can share your projects. You can share your YouTube link out if you have one. I want to empower women. That is what I'm here for. This is my side hustle, and I don't know what I would do without it and without you guys. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I will link my IOD store down below in the comments if you need to get any of these products. Thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you again next week. Mm -hmm.